three between Hellraisers and LGB. And uh, it's going to be Dust 2. LGB managed to take all their T rounds except for two on the second half of Cash. So Hellraisers is really struggling there. But maybe, maybe Hellraisers can bring back some more consistency into Dust 2. I mean, this should be pretty good for LGB as well because Dust 2, everyone knows how to play Dust 2. Even if you're a mixed team, it's a pretty simple map. They have experience playing together as well. Uh, and I'm sure like Zevers has some drills that he can suggest or if they are looking for some kinds of calls. I mean, this is one of their strong suits previously when he used to be with them. So I expect a really good... I, I think LGB might even be able to just win this one outright because Hellraiser should be favored on paper, right? I mean, they should be. I want to see if Hellraisers will go for like a double op at any time with one player on B because Kucha obviously was opping for them yeah, he was really good. before the addition of Mo. So... I, I don't think I've seen that yet, but I want to see it at some point because I, I, I think it's something worth exploring for their team in certain situations. And a map like Dust2, if you stick one person on B, I think it could be powerful. But I think they're unlikely to do it. And But, you know, I just uh, hope that they will give it a go. Yeah. I mean, Kucha on on any defensive kind of warping is really consistent. That's what he used to bring. And, yeah, I, I feel like that was a really cool period for Hellraisers because, as you say, you know, because they were they and they lost simple and they were putting Kutra in the OP as learning how to do that role. I feel like he stepped up to the challenge way better than anyone had like, anticipated. And now that skill set is there to be used whenever they need it in the future. And this as you said, this was actually a really good good opportunity for that. Either as a crossover AWPA, which I imagine Mo would be doing, or as the AWPA on B. I would love to see that. Um, however, it's gonna be LGB starting off on the T side this time after losing the knife and Hellraisers kicking things off on C T. And uh, what is going to happen here? I always find that this is one of the harder uh, CT pistols to prepare for because it's hard to really... There's, you can't really be proactive without uh, without it being really risky. Stacking is, doesn't really work as effectively either. So we see a pretty good cap push here. That's the fast rotation to B, which has now been lost. So LGB off to a good start. Yep, and they have control of the sights and quick peeking from Hellraiser. Just get some information. Nice shot onto Dozier's head. There still things evened up. Bomb is down on the platform, however, and uh, our razors need to be careful here yeah, not to go too far. I think we might see a knife attempt there. Could you going to get the first one and the second one? So that has not worked out for LGB whatsoever. Now it's Polly, who still doesn't have the bomb, versus two, and it's all gone the wrong way so far, but he's going to manage to close it out in the 1v2. So Hellraiser's almost threw that one away, but managed to hold on to it in the end. Yeah, and they'll have a plenty of uh, cash for scouts if they want to get three scouts that could actually happen okay now adrenaline gets pistol armor will we get another scout here they got mo and kutra as you said so another scout would be pretty good but it's also possible that they're, they're going to say hey we have some cash here let's go for the save make sure we guarantee you good ops oh don't know what happened there but we do have two scouts in play big long push and this is actually very reminiscent of the old lgb they used to always do this they would actually build into slow rounds before eventually coming onto this, but I guess they're keeping it simple as, as they're a mix right now. And so be careful with these these scouts on Moe and Kucha. They don't want to lose them if the round is really looking unfavorable. And so far, that's exactly what's happening. And Mo will lose his, his scout. Now, how is this? They should probably play for exits here. They can bring those weapons into the next round. Five players live on the bomb side, but quick frag from Adren might change things a little bit, but still, no kit. Oh, okay. Actually, Kucha has a kit. But yeah, they are going to go the save. I really like this as uh, the Scout and the 5.7s are really powerful and uh, maybe they get better engagement next round. Yeah, don't forget the armor as well. There's a lot of money for the Hellraiser side to save here. $5,600 worth to be exact. So we'll live to fight another day. You'll see if they can retrieve that Scout later on. I'm not sure exactly where it went down. But there we go. So another round in the bag for LGB. I think Polly might have that CT um, scout actually, because the text when he shows when he has it out is blue. Although maybe that's just a grade of the weapon. Yeah, I would I would assume so. Okay. Ooh, got the tag onto Angel there. They're actually boosting in mid there, I think. So looking for a very fast short timing. Double nade down long center of Zebes, heavily tagged now. Well, that scout will be a bit dangerous. And I think they peaked mid one too many times there. And <laughs> they're still continuing to peak mid. And Polly is just getting the frags here. He will dance all day at that range. I think he used eight shots on my first to get that kill. 
Yeah, that was very anticlimactic after they saved some of those weapons into the next round. But they get the buy now, but uh, the thing is, is that they won't have an AWP because they went for the, uh, the buy with the scouts. I think that's one of those situations where if in the pistol round they don't get any frags, then you go kind of hardcore on the safe. But if you do get the frags and you can actually afford to have scouts, I actually feel like on this map it changes the dynamic a lot and it makes it much more sensible. OTB not even upgrading their weapons. Still got the MP7, the P90 and the scout as they use that smoke on the corner to push long. However, Kucha, again, knowing his uh, angle, is going to take down Rubino. There's a player by blue for the uh, LGB side. And Jake needs to be careful as uh, if they check carefully, they can see feet under the blue area unless he is right in the corner. And uh, he's been spotted there. So those are going to have some support, but he will not need it. Going to take out Jake anyway before LGB can even use that to uh, push elsewhere. They're going to make the play happen up catwalk now. See if they can get some damage in Gucci by Goose though. And they have Mo on crossover. So it should be pretty impossible for Arrows here. I mean, a play into C even into CT spawn is going to be very problematic as Angel's there. So good surround here from Hellraisers, but they do have five left, so you would expect that. So Molotov in there onto the sites to clear any positions to get a quick peek, but it's going to be Kucha takes down the bomber, and the remainder should follow. Polly now, pistol out, does get the, get the quick frag though, but uh, players all over the place. Nice shot there on Sidosia. Can he get more damage here? Great tag. Almost gets the next kill. Oh, this could be dangerous here. They cannot afford to lose more than two players. They will survive with three. And uh, potentially, well, I guess we're not going to see an all for a while here. That's going to be very depressing. And LGB having that, that round where they didn't invest in anything. Have the AWP in play now. So this is scary for L Racers. Oh, he shot between the two CTs. That's really unlucky there. Again, we've got the uh, standard long take for the CTs. Will be no challenge from LGB, and LGB are not going to leave a lurker there either. Going to go for a fast B split, it seems. Three people go through double doors, and uh, that's going to be Adren holding down the corner before his teammate can even get there. A team kill from Rubino as well as he tries to spray down Angel, and then he, he himself will get naded afterwards. Four versus two. This round not going the way of LGB. They're yeah, bombed down in mid there. That's really... Uh, really a, a huge issue here. Polly going to go for the first flick shot. They ha they don't even have to show themselves though. The bomb is there in the open. Polly has to come to them until the time runs out and which t uh, which point they will want to backstab and, and get the kill. But Polly's going to go in through the doors and see what he can get done here with the peaks. Adren is uh, backing away. Going to spot the head now. So he gets another read on the position. In comes the peak from CT. That's going to open up Adren for a peak as well. And we get a pause coming in from Kucha, but good around there for Hellraisers, and they'll steal away the AWP. Once again, they lose two players, so their money is building, but very slowly. But th picking up the uh, the value of the AWP is, is quite helpful, and uh, that will find its way to Mo. And Mo is going to be doing the uh, crossover AWPing, so you'll have the 2-3 setup, um, very likely, where whereby uh, the two guys are on B, they don't have much mid-presence, not much spotting on short, and nobody on short. Instead, the AWPer will be on crossover, one will be on site, and one will be on long. So that's what I anticipate here for Hellraisers. And uh, we have another buy in store here for LGB. Going to get the AKs out, a few pistols as well. What do you think is a good play here? I mean, a wall of smokes, if they get up catwalk, which should be fairly free, a wall of smoke play onto A could be really effective here with this kind of a buy. Hmm... I think uh, well, with the nades they have, if they can get someone jumping down into a slope with a smoke in CT, and obviously they'd need control of long as well to go for a two prong assault, that could also be an option. So the people with the short range guns can push the slope on the A site as the rest of them can push long and short. But it seems they may favor a B. There's the bomb here standing outside the door at the moment, being held by sentries, holding the angle presumably by the side of the pillar, as is the standard angle to hold there, in case of a push from the uh, CTs, in case of pop flashes, etc. Four in towards B with Zevez, I think, at uh, double doors. He is pushing maybe to try and draw the fire of one of the B players away, but uh, they're going to concentrate on the B tunnel for now. That's going to be three frags. Only Rubino getting a trade for LGB, and it's Rubino and Zevez 
Try and take the round for their team. Cooch is going to take Rubino and the bomb. Seves will be cleaned up soon afterwards. That's another round in the bag for Hellraiser. Surviving with three players. For the third time in a row. For the third time in a row. Yeah, so the money is gradually getting more and more. And this is the round where they should clean it up significantly. Um, so yeah, interesting that LGB did not challenge Catwalk. Again, Catwalk is for free in this kind of a setup, that the 2-3 setup. It is completely for free. And this setup is so prevalent in the meta game right now. It's the default for pretty much every team at the top level. Um, I, I think that uh, Envious were the first team that used it a huge amount. But we'll have to see now what will happen here for LGB. Doja's in this way. This is so strong because they're, they're just blocked him as they go backwards in. And he gets all the frags. Such an efficient way to play this spot. A little bit of risk, but what you can doing? see he gets all the frags as they jump into his USP. I don't even know. I think they were just blind. I don't think they knew, had any idea what was going on. Dan, there, they were lemmings on a jump command. I think it's because they're in this, inside the smoke and blind. James, that was <laughs> that was absolutely hilarious. Yeah. But that's but that's a common thing you see. I know NBK likes to do that yeah, as well. Yeah. For example, basically, um, it's something I, I do on Inferno in apps. If there's an apps for us, just push the smoke down, especially on the pistol, and just crouch in front of it with a five seven, and uh, it's a lot of free kills. Yeah, they're blinded in smoke, and they are assuming that there's that they're, they're actually outside the doors, but in fact they're not. They're all blocked. Uh, that's amazing. Um, okay, so Mo's going to be going. On Cat here, of course, he can just drop off after the shot and get the spot. But you got to be careful in this spot because uh, <coughs> you can get flashed out easily. You can get uh, pre-fired pretty easily as well. But here we go. We've got Angel in a nice position. Going to spot the first player that gets the frag. They will locate his position. And that's only the one for one. Not quite good enough here. Leaves his teammate on the site under a lot of pressure. Mo will clean up the back, though, as they lose, I believe it was, uh, Dren on the bomb side itself. So... Three on three. Good round here for LGB. Can they hold on to the bomb side though? Three versus three. See Rubino just teasing in the uh, apps area still. A bunch of flashbangs on the T side, but they're going to need their guns out if they want to hold this. Kucha's in the site. There's a second frag for him as well. Rubino falling towards the car position. Centris is outside the site, being spotted, and that will be a clean three man retake with no one lost by Hellraiser. Five to three now. Taking. Uh, an extended lead as LGB will buy down to uh, no money, basically. It's uh, it's actually quite interesting that LGB have shown that in a lot of these rounds they like to actually go for that B split, but they do it with with more players always going through upper dark, almost always. So that's actually an interesting um, uh, variation of it because that's not super typical. It's not actually typ uh, that typical. Uh, usually you see the three or the four go through through middle as you can really worry about that upper dark choke point. It can be very scary. But uh, either way, two players early on mid here for Hellraisers. They, and they have abandoned the crossover and long completely. Almost. Well, not long, sorry. Yeah, these bomb slide A. And then they will now go back as uh, the timing will permit that. But Angel can get the info here for Mo. So, so Mo knows when he has to look at Catwalk because they don't see anything on Catwalk just yet. Now they spotted sentries by Xbox and they are starting to realize that, hey, okay, now LGB are taking Catwalk. Mo will be in position shortly to take them down and we'll have the rotation come in as well to help, help Mo out towards the A-bomb site. But LGB, they haven't committed yet. They can still go for a B-split if they want. So Angel's in a blind spot. You cannot see where he is unless you go through those doors and specifically check it. Very nicely done. He was hiding his silencer the entire time as well. What a pick by Jake. Just a little tap to take down Mo. Kucha in the goose position is going to see the bomb. That's going to be mean a rotation. But uh, Zebes is in a pos position to flank from B. If he can get there in time, Rubino trying to hold things down from two directions. But it's going to be too much for him. Angel going to take him down. Zebes in CT spawn at the moment versus three. He will be spotted soon. Those you are holding down the flank on the on short should he choose to go there but not enough time left and he will fall as well Hellraiser's once again surviving with three players they yeah. won't reach the auto it's uh, really cool for Kucha to actually delay the bomb plant by being on goose just trading his life for that it's actually super important because if the bomb gets planted for short and they're able to actually like quickly run to like Gandalf and short um, if that's their only option for a plant which it was because I think there's still a play on long then that that becomes actually a much easier round for LGB than it otherwise would be so and also the the counterplay to having the wall of smokes one of the ways to deal with it is that usually it results in a guaranteed short plant immediately and then whilst the smokes are still up they can safely fall back to post plant positions but if you have the guy on goose who can spray through the smoke onto that short plant and take down the bomber before so it doesn't get planted in time the smokes go away and then even if they do get the plant 
falling back to post plant positions is really hard because there's no cover anywhere. It's a very exposed angle and all the CTs are now on the bomb site. So it's always really important to have a guy that's able to, su to survive to prevent plants on A. And that's exactly what Kucha did there. Despite running out and dying shortly afterwards, he uh, did stop the bomb from going down straight away. So. Oh dear, that's not so good. That's like they wanted the forward smoke there. But they have actually managed to do a counter strat because it's going to be the B push. Oh, that bomb is as well. so lucky. Oh, they're not even looking towards car right now. There is mass confusion for LGB. And they are all going to be in a lot of trouble right now. The bomb indeed now finally being picked up and pushed into the bomb site. The creatures can spot that. Sentries goes down to Dozier. And that is so, so depressing for LGB. That was just one of those rounds, man. That you just you just counter strat without re even realizing it. Just rushing the lower dark there. And look at the money. Hellraiser is moving into the five-figure mark for uh, a fair few players. Dozier on a clean ten thousand dollars. That is a bundle tied around his left leg. So again, you've got the standard play here from Hellraiser. Three people towards along, although they're going to linger there for a little bit longer than previous. And uh, now they've got firm control. They will move back into. A uh, more spread out formation. Polly taking down Angel, holding the angle on shorts. That's going to be a nice pick for Hellraisers and will give them. Sorry, for LGB. And will afford them more freedom in the mid area. Still leaving one player over towards B, our Hellraisers, but uh, more aggressive in the short area. Nice flash coming in, which means Dozier will fall. And Mo will have to get into a more passive position with that AWP, probably playing. A slope, although he's opting for the site itself at the moment. Oh, he has no one on long, so he has to play from the site. We're in a difficult position, and Hellraiser's kind of bunching up towards the mid area. Looking like they're playing for a B retake. Oh, oh my god. Wow. Tech 9, please. Just flying in there. That is definitely some Pika's advantage going on. Great response. Been a little bit too slow on that one, but Kucha has his back. But still the advantage here, LGB taking over like A long. Is this, this is a really good decision going together up long like this. They can always get the good trades in, always get the bomb down. So, Harrises can go for the retake though. They got the uh, AWP and the M4, A smoke and a M2 gets. Oh wow, on the, like, the last bullet that sprayed through the smoke. I don't believe it, and Polly's going to go straight towards long here. Is it, uh, it is a plant for long, I believe. Kucha has a smoke, however, and now with nobody on the site, if he doesn't mess this up, I think we're going to have... Oh no, that feeling though. That plant is not easy to see from long, and it's going to be the headshot for Mo, because he's got to get such a wide angle on the AWP there. Oh my god, that is, that yeah. is so gutting. You have to be on the platform to... Get that frag yeah. nine out of ten times. That is a platform plant, and that is what happens when people have a smoke. So it is a gamble. I'm surprised they didn't go for the the, the like the risky long play because they had three players left alive at that point. So they had they had the ability to just plant like for long. Yes. Oh dear. Do you get a challenge there? They didn't take. have control of short at the time, so so it, it would have been a very dangerous mm. plant. Good point, good point. We're going to have a couple men advantage here, making making that even better for the Hellraiser side of Dozia. Finds himself one of the players, so he can make the call here that Rubino is at T-spawn, so one of the team players at T-spawn. That's going to allow the cat player to push down a little bit. One will be collected by Rubino after he picks off Dozia. But what do they do here? They're two against three, which is actually not too bad here if they are able to play together, but they've got to combine. So this is actually stuck here on the top area of mid. And the Orpa is looking towards him, and Kucha could also find a kill, find an angle onto Zevers here. Surely Angel's calling his position here for Kucha. Kucha's playing it safe though, and he's just uh, a little bit wary of the jump up onto the Xbox. It will be the play into B though, and Adren is going to go and discover exactly what's going on. Now we should have uh, the fast rotate from Kucha. Angel's going to be alone here. Gonna have to do it by himself, and Zeves picks up the kill. Great entry there from Zeves. In comes Kucha, waiting for the bomb plant. There's 25 seconds left to play for as well. Now there's the fake. Kucha gonna go with the nade, and it's gonna be the frag for Rubino. Good stuff there from LGB. Good save actually. Two versus what was it four? Two yeah, I, I, I don't feel like Hellraiser should have lost that. No, they they were pushing Again, everywhere. Do, those those are just playing the mind games with. Um, the player in long, uh, sorry, in T spawn, 
with the delayed re-peak, but he was ready and waiting for it, and that really weakened the Hellraiser defense. Four versus two, then they can hold both sides. Yep. Um, or play play retake at A with one person keeping an eye on mid, but with three people, it's considerably worse for them, and they just yep. didn't win the duels. They didn't have the flashes to go for the peak in B either afterwards. They had to walk in their raw. It's uh, it's exactly the point I was making on overpass. Where it's like, what is what do you gain from doing this? If well, okay, if you do win the duel, yeah, you win the round. But if you lose it, then you're very likely to you can very likely lose the round as well. So the risk is too great versus what is gained. But Angel will kick things off well for them again. And here, not to make any mistakes, this should be a good advantage to play with. The double orb setup's working well. We get Dozier dropping off a of catwalk. He's going to spot Jkem. Now Mo should be there with the orb. There it is. Spotted onto Jkem. And Adren picking up a player on catwalk. The smoke is not present on Xbox. Allowing Adren free vision of catwalk. 5 on 2 this time. Even better here for our races. Now just Severs alive. And he will find himself... In a one-on-one -on -one shortly. He hasn't seen a Dren. Oh, the dink. He has no idea where it's coming from. And there are guns in many directions for Zivez to deal with. Trade is missed, but... Players this, everywhere. Yeah, this is a hunt. I don't even know what to say. Oh my god, that looks so oppressive. Uh, there was more baits in the fish and tackle shop. I don't know. Yeah, that's Double true. orps. Double orps, Dan. Double orps. Yeah. So far, so good for the for the uh, double orbs. And Angel actually grabbing an orb. He's really an explosive orper. Lots of flick shots. Not a lot of consistency. Not a lot of um, yeah consistency on some of the defensive kills. But this guy can no scope. He can get in your face and do some crazy stuff. It's Angel after all. The entry fragger of Hellraisers. Those names just a little bit too early. And both is going to come out regardless from the teeth. They are on the uh, eco here. Just the pistols. Are we going to try and have the crossfire <coughs> with his teammate? Unable to save his life, but look at the damage he is doing here. Three versus one. Polly's got the AWP, however, so now things can get dangerous. Polly's got the AWP, Polly's got the bomb, and Polly has a minute plus to, to work with. He can just sit in the pit for a few seconds. Ooh, I think he hasn't picked up the bomb, actually. So the bomb may have been spotted by the, uh, the CTs. They're going for the double peak as well, and Polly is dead. I'm, I'm, I don't know why they're peeking there, James. I'm afraid. <laughs> I was afraid for them. Cause, Cause that can be, cause Polly missed a shot there that looked like it was on as well. And if, and then, then it's mm. a one and two. Um, of course, you know, it's still a really hard round, but lots of risks being taken by Hellraisers in spots like that. Good engagements for a Polly there. Now we're gonna have LGB moving for a long take again. And will it be successful? Um, here we go, Kucha is gonna be a supporting Mo, but Mo's in a lot of trouble there. They're gonna line up for him, but he only gets a single kill. Great entry here from LGB, storming the A area as Dozier wants to flash himself through the smoke. Great pop flash, they're all blinded. Goes close for the spray, but he cannot get more than a single kill, and that will not deter LGB from pushing this A bomb site. In goes the incendiary though from Adren. That's gonna help out, stop them from getting on the bomb site ever so quickly as they intended. Angel finally, we're gonna see lots of shots taken, eventually a frag. Ooh. And 50 HP for sentries and Zevis. Another incendiary, very, very nicely placed as well. That should move them from position. Gonna go for the shots here with the Galil. Angel picks up one, sentries will return. And the Dren will swing by the side here, looking for that shot from ramp. Sentries, Brian in the angles, will take him down. Good stuff there from sentries. Picks up another round and um, we will have 10 to 5 here. How are this over LGB? Weirdly, it says 5 to 4 at the top middle of the screen, which is really weird. Yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking, uh, wasn't but, it just 10 5? But it is 10 5, guys. <laughs> I, I've never seen that. Must, that My must mind be, was uh, exploding. Yeah, I thought we went back in time. I was like, I thought we uh, over with the half, like, I don't know. But yeah, I was 10 like, to 5. This is a really long 5 4. Yeah. <laughs> I had a really long 5 4. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, how is this up on the pistol round now? They look in pretty good stead here to uh, to make a quick map here. If they're able to break, win the pistol and uh, hurt the economy of LGB in that way, it's going to be hard for for the recovery to come in. Okay, so Centris one, Centris not a second one traded, but all the information for his team. We're going to have a three-man hold here towards the A site. There's another pick with Rubino. Those USPS is doing. Very nice work. It's a cool angle from Sentries, by the way, as a side note.
<laughs> Silence. Hey, you interrupted me, so you can talk now. No, there's a side note. Uh, well, you, you ruined the pistol round. You ruined it, Dan. You ruined all of it. All right, but LGB will ruin Hellraisers in that that, uh, that round. P90, Famous. Well, another Famous. Scout and then Force. So they have uh, all kinds of weapons here. And they'll be up against... Um, oh, Hellraisers didn't buy anything. They didn't get the bomb down. So that means that they're going to go for a, a surprise buy. That is what that means, because otherwise it doesn't make sense to do this. Otherwise, you should be buying at least something in this round. So they want to go with the uh, the Galils and uh, the armor in the next round. Or the Tech 9 armor grenades, which means that they might have a set play in mind, like the Wall of Smokes on A. So we, we might, we'll see either one of those things, I think. So let's have a look. So Galil armor. Okay, so if if they went Tech Nines, then we would see the probably the Wall of Smokes play on A. But they got Galil AKs and armor and like a, a couple of smokes, so they're going to play a hardcore weapon advantage here. So you, you would probably want to see them taking you know big open spaces like Long and and uh, getting themselves onto the A. Or I guess they could go with their spawn. They could spawn here for uh, Upper Dark. And oh no, the push is coming in. This is really really bad for OGB. They're going to run straight into the rifles. Oh no, they're going to go down, and it's going to be a 5 on 3 with the B-bomb side under control. LGB definitely taken by surprise here, not reading the situation correctly, otherwise why on earth would they be in a situation? Only Zevez remains, they haven't killed a single Hellraisers player, and this is not going to bode well. For the future of LGB on Dust 2. The the strange thing is that they is that they should have been able to predict very easily that for the same because they would have had the same information we did. They would have noticed that no, it was just Glocks and no armor and no bomb down. So that means the buy is coming 100%. If 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 Hellraisers are not really stupid or something, if they you know they will do the buy there. It's the only player that makes sense after the full save um, in that round. So. They should have known that. Maybe they expected it to go towards A. Maybe that was like a gamble from them. I'm not sure. But yeah, that, that really backfired, that push. And now their economy is in a very nasty place. And Hellraisers have a loads of grenades to combine with their rifles. AWP onto Polly. This is very much a mixed bag. Pick a mix. Yeah, this is a bit of a... It's all over the place here, so... LGB trying to keep themselves in it for now. Adren being tagged. That jump may be saving him there. Left on 18 HP. Now we have two players close in uh, by double doors. Got the smokes out trying to deny vision to that orb. And with three hanging around the long area, I have to wonder if there's going to be a push coming. Zevez is playing... The uh, car position or game helper, if you are a 1.6er, you can see uh, slowly creeping up short as well. And formations changing in the mid area from these uh, Hellraisers team. Oh, the bomber would have been heard there, just getting dropped on catwalk. Now, it's not a huge deal. Still doesn't give CTs all that much to go on. LGB uh, ready for a cat drop, ready for a play into wait. Gonna see the A split though. The 3 2. Sentries misses the 1D. Might not get another opportunity there to get an easy kill. Angel's tagged him down to 10. Just one nade is all it takes. Oh, but he snaps Angel. Could get the next one onto Kucha. Quite dangerous over at Long, but also Catwalk is being crushed. LGB with a nice round hit. Only the Long player surviving. Kucha's going to need to get some damage done here. They've not left themselves with any time to play with. Kucha's got no time to do anything here. And if they actually try to go for the kill after the time, that's going to be crippling for his economy. Oh, gets the spray on the cute though. But Polly will end him right there and then. However, LGB, they force it up there. So they won't have any money here. And Hellraisers still have bank to play with. So again, it's that battle of economy. We'll have, we'll have Hellraisers getting the full buy. And they can... Really reset LGB massively here if they win this one. But let's have a look and see if that is what's going to happen. We've got full everything for both teams, more or less. We're lacking a few grenades for the CTs. 2 3 setup for LGB, very standard. Rotating the, one of the players, the cat player, into the CT spawn. Again, pretty standard. This helps for the cat drop plays. Support Polly. 
Mid not smoked yet though. Oh, Ooh. that was dangerous. Almost a double. That was so in control of uh, Shorts at the moment, losing long, that's going to mean that someone has to retrieve the bomb, which was outside the doors. Zeva is moving into a more aggressive position following that pick, which will allow his teammates some information, allow firm control of long, and he's going for the flank towards Short as well. Angel won't have the HP to deal with this. That's going to force Hellraisers to push Short immediately. Otherwise, that flank is going to cause them even more problems. They've seen Sentras in the uh, long area. They're going to rotate back to the site as well. So they've got to be paranoid because he could be holding an angle. In fact, Zebes will be holding an angle onto site, doing great work for the LGB side. Mo and Adren versus five here for LGB. They need, need to get this bomb down fast before they run out of the opportunity to get down at all. Adren goes down as well as Mo is slowly planting it. Really, the bomb should have been done long before then. And he gets caught with his pants down two rounds behind our LGB as Hellraisers find themselves on the eco. Yeah, it looks really bad for Hellraisers right now. A complete different story from the first half where they went 10-5. We see LGB claiming four rounds, only six more to do what Hellraisers did. So Hellraisers running out of chances slowly but surely. And on this eco, it looks like they want to potentially get out of mid here for a quick kill. Maybe get rid of the AWP from Polly. Once you get into this position here, Polly is so safe right now. Gets his headshot onto Adren, and this should be over very shortly for Hellraisers here. So, unfortunately, their play, they wanted to try to catch Polly off guard, hoping that he would be close range. But he knows better than that. He is far away. His AWP would not have been retrievable even if he was to guard. And uh, 10 to 11, one more, and LGB tie up with Hellraisers. So it's starting to get very, very good for them. Looking really solid on the CT side. But Harris is in with the buy again. We haven't seen any executes from them. We haven't really seen any big B splits from them either. Um, they've, the only round that they won was basically off of the picking kind of the pick game. Angel limited to just the, the Tech 9 as we go ahead. Although he saved $1,000. So maybe he can use that later on to drop for a teammate. Should they uh, prove successful? in this round. So, they've got much earlier control of short than they have in previous rounds. And uh, Adren is just charging towards the site, but he's gonna get taken down by Jake holding from a uh, slope, I think. And Hellraiser just one by one getting completely cut down here. Not sure what to say about that one, Dan. Yeah, I mean, the play into middle was really, really quite weak. They weren't, didn't really have the trades frags set up very well. And LGB, their defense in B was really strong. They had actually two players in B when one on middle. So A was very, very weak. And this is something that Hellraisers have not really been exploiting. I mean, to be fair, LGB didn't really exploit it very much on their T half either. The fact that Catwalk is for free. Catwalk is very much for free. Again, the Wall of Smokes play is so strong. I don't know why we don't see teams doing it more often. We see You often see teams like uh, Fnatic, Envious, uh, NIP, they go for these plays quite a lot and it's very effective, but we're not seeing that here from Hellraisers or LGB, and it's costing Hellraisers because uh, if you're able to put the, the smoke and crossover as well as the site on A, then the AWPA can't do anything. That You cannot stop the bomb from going down unless you get a guy on the site itself, and then it's still like one, one player against quite a few T's. Okay, so Hellraiser's in a weird situation where they've got three people wanting to pressure short, but the bomb is on the wrong side of short. Fortunately for them, Jake is uh, moving to a more passive position just in time, which will allow the bomb to get up onto that short side. So, see if they can do uh, a short plant sand smoke grenade. They're all coming in for the duel there, which they will eventually win. And that Molotov is going to stop the short plant from going down, but they can do a safe plant on the site now. Three versus two. Uh, Dozier will leave Adren all alone in no man's land where he will be eliminated. And LGB finally take the lead here on the CT side, which has been pretty solid so far. So imagine if they have if they have smokes uh, and rifles there with, with armor as well. They get the bomb down and they can fall back out of the exposed areas with because the smokes will still be up. That's kind of the idea. So I really, really desperately want to see this because right now they're trying these mid splits and LGB set up very, very well accommodates it accommodates those they're really well like again we're going to see two players in b 
very quickly the cat players moving into a position to actually crossfire from the B from B to uh to CT spawn, that's really strong. And we're gonna get double play on catwalk. So LGB preemptively getting ahead of what could be uh, you know, a solution for our races, which is to try to move through catwalk. So if they play the trade game here well, then uh, then this is gonna be a very bad round for Hellraisers. Okay, so pushing the smoke um, without proper pop flashes from teammates. And that's gonna be the first frag in favor of LGB. Mo coming through the smoke delay to take down Zevers, who took some damage from Sentries it seems. Four versus four now. And LGB starting to ask questions. You can see a rotation down B slope at the moment. Hellraiser's just uh, hanging around the mid area at the moment. I think we might see a late late push through long here, potentially. While the remaining three head towards A. So, we'll see who wins the duels this time. That's going to be a perfectly placed Molotov to force Centrus out of position. But he's going to come out of position. And Rubinho's going to find a frag on Stozia. Center is getting the trade on to Kucha. Three versus three now as the rotation comes in from B. Yeah, Dozier, yeah, surprising he didn't get that frag. That's the purpose of the Molotov. His crosshair should have been on the spot, but it's going to put a lot of pressure onto the remainder of Hellraisers because Kucha's on one HP. In comes LGB, straight up catwalk. All three players, actually. Not sure where the plant was. I guess it's on uh, for long there. Or maybe the platform, in fact, as we have LGB taking the bomb site. Mo needs to hit some shots here, but how is to win this round? He gets nothing. Angel's left over. Oh, that's a really perfect uh, Molotov there. And oh my god, he's gonna get two players. Oh What's no! Doing? What is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> what on earth was that? Oh my god. What did I just witness? That was absolutely ridiculous. That was amazing. I c oh my god. Tech 9, a couple, yeah. couple bullets into the diffuser, and then the rest. It's like his keyboard was holding W and he was holding D. <laughs> Sorry, S, but the uh, the keyboard won out. Yeah, he did, did not know what to do there. With 100 HP, I, he, can, he can do it. I'm actually not sure. I, I'm sh tweet me how much HP you need oh, that was hilarious. to actually diffuse. Because I don't know what the DPS is of the Molotov. Or tweet me the DPS of the Molotov. That also works. Because it's 3.5 seconds. No, it's 5 seconds for the diffuse there. So. Um, well, that's a, that's a cool way for Hellraisers to come back into it. Very unexpected. The problem is, James, is that they haven't looked favorable in any of these rounds on their T side. This is the first time here they get two good trades in on Sentries and Rubino. Now, all they have to do is figure out how to attack the situation. We have a huge flank here from, uh, from Upper Dark, from the B player. Jake. He's actually in T spawn right now. He could just c completely crush them, but they've spotted him. Doja's looking at suicide. He knows. Oh, and he will eliminate JKM. So there you go. Four versus two. LGB in a big, big uh, spot of bother. Now, we get the charge here towards the uh, B side. Zevers has to go hero mode. Gonna mess up the flash. Can Zevers get his hero on? And delay the plant for his teammates to come in. Lots of uh, things for him to do here. And just try and wait as well. Lots of grenades on Polly. That could actually help out massively. There's the first one over the top. Gonna flash Moen. Zevis will go in. Does go down to Dozier. Now it gets pretty impossible. Kucha comes in from behind. 13 to 12. Hellraiser is actually pulling some rounds out now. And uh, we have a situation where LGB, if they lose this one, they're going to be on the eco. And they might not even be able to have awesome weaponry this time. They need two drops, which they just have enough money for. Just when you thought... LGB might take it. Our Razors retake the lead with an exceptional play from Angel. And uh, what else can be said? So these Orpers back in action once again. Mo jumping past Polly's angle. Polly retreating back towards the B site. Well, they will have no challenges for now. Kucha is going to be the lurker outside long. And again, Hell Razor is going to dance around the short area for a time. Uh, the interesting thing is that where things started going wrong for LGB is when they tried to actually get preemptive and play proactively, try to push a little bit and play different areas of control like Catwalk. That's when the trades started coming into Hellraisers and it, it became favorable. When they're playing defensively like this, Hellraisers haven't been able to break it historically in this match so far. So they've fallen back to a setup that's been working all the time for them. So they just have to win this round and they're fine. If they lose this one, it's two free ones for Hellraisers or two rounds for Hellraisers. They'll go on to 15 likely. Polly's orb is all the way onto the B site as this push is coming in. And I think Adren's jumped down through the smoke as well. So he's got a slope in his control. Kucha's going to be deep 
onto mid and short, stopping the rotations from the CT. So all they have going for them, LGB, is long for the time being. Now I have to see what they can do with that Kucha coming in to support the uh, player holding down the CT area. And LGB already backing off. They had Zevez in long. They've lost Zevez. And Polly is stuck in B with the AWP. Going to lose the duel to Mo as well as her raises move within two of taking it 2-1. Yeah, that's, that's really nice that the, the uh, drop into CT as well as uh, Angel coming in through mid. That was super nice. That's uh, something that we would love to see more of, I think. Especially considering that LGB have been playing the uh, the cat guy through to CT spawns so many of these rounds. It's uh, definitely an effective way to get some quick kills. And now we have a, an eco here for LGB. So again, Hellraiser should be able to go to the 15th round without too much trouble here. We have a single player, just Doja, gets taken down by USP against an AK, and that AK is retrievable. Uh, we had a bit of blind spot play there in the mid doors, but to no avail yet. Kuchar taking down Devers. Centuries, heavily tagged Jake and Polly remaining. Polly's got an AK. We've got flames going down as well, and somehow LGB are finding a lot of frags here. We've got two versus two, and there's a f ooh, there's a flank on the way. Edren needs to find the bot the uh, this kill soon because he has the bomb as well. Kuchar's positioning will allow him to plant it for long but as opposed Polly, to short. Polly's coming in from the back. Oh, he won't get it in time. That switch from Kuchar. I think I think. He just looked at long, just as Polly arrived. That is so unlucky, Hill Polly. Oh my god, another P250 kill. It's a one on one now. Oh, the GG nade. Kucha picks up the kill. But what happened there? They managed to get so many frags. Kucha had to get a four kill for that round to even be a victory. So, interesting stuff here. Of course, we had the uh, the single man playing into B. Who I think it was Dren actually. And he got killed by USP James. Killed by the USP. One on one. Kucha with 26 kills for his team so far. Rubino topping the board on his side. But um, Did you see that video, by the way, that with a USP it takes, what, like five shots to the torso to kill someone, but four shots to the legs? I saw the, 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 what the is thread, that? but I didn't, what I didn't is, what click. Is, what is this? What is the meaning of this? Doesn't make so, sense. guys, the, the lesson here is shoot for the legs. With a USP. Specifically with a USP. Okay, so just a very, very brief pause. We're going to have the unpause now and back into the uh, into the match. The briefest of pauses, Dan. Safer pauses, which are even more brief. Yes. So, how are you? just need one more to close this one out. Uh, LGB, they managed to actually win cash, so they won map two. Uh, overpass was narrowly won by Hellraisers. It's been very close all the way through this series. And again, LGB playing with Sentries and Zevas, two stand-ins in place of Mystic and PRB. So, not the easiest situation for them, but Zev is going to pick up a quick opening here again. Akucha is finding himself alone on long, and he gets fragged for no trade. we got a player moving fast up Cat. It's actually going to be slowed down a little bit, as uh, it was Angel was pushing up there. He's going to pull back a little bit. No stack coming in. What a ridiculous headshot there from Rubino found through the smoke. But likewise, the favor is returned. Angel picks up one through the smoke as well onto JCAM. So they're down three against four our Hellraisers as they try to go for this play, but they have to best Polly in a one-on-one -on -one and it's not going to happen. No smokes to help, no trades to help, no flashes, nothing. Just one-on-ones all the way in this round and playing without team play has not helped Hellraisers at all. Yeah, the money is a mess on the Hellraisers side. So they need to consider what they want to do now. If they go for a save in this round, then they might have two... Buy. Oh, no buy. May have two opportunities to... Well, one opportunity really to take it, and we're going to have some kind of late selection from the Hellraisers team so they can buy together in the next round should it go that far. So Kucha rocking the AK. Yeah, he had $8,000 or something, so he's just uh, evening up his money a little bit. Um, so, yeah, a really weird situation now for Hellraisers. Um, going to have to. And this, this of course, is because they, they lost the anti eco. Well, they won it, but they lost four players on it. That's that's what really has created this situation for them. Now, they're going to go for the B splits. They have a single smoke from Dozier. It's not really a split. They're all together. That's a good point. New play. They have the instant smoke onto uh, on oh, the, the CT. Bomb, the bomb is actually in the tunnel, but it's off our screens. And there you can see it appearing now. And uh, the B split, Dan, has proven successful so far. 
You know those close. He could take a few people down. That's going to be one. He's going to run out of bullets before he tries to take down some more. There are two rifles now in the hands of Hellraisers. We have a Dren um, holding armor and the P250. We're just going to be out there with with no armor to speak of, trying to hold down the B site. And he's Team Flash Kucha instead, who runs out from the fire and gets taken down, and it's all collapsed. And LGB bring it to 14. Well then, it's going to get riskier and riskier here for Hellraisers, but they did get the bomb down, so extra $800 for all the players. I think they lost two in a row now, something like that, so we to have a sizable amount of cash in addition to work with. And they just need the one round. LGB must get this, though, in the, from their perspective, get that over time, but they got double ops rolling in. We're going to get some uh, op shenanigans on mids. Okay, I, I actually kind of like that LGB in a round like this are not gambling with a mid challenge. I don't think that gamble is going to be consistent when they're the setup that has been working for them has just been not taking risks, just playing the team play and allowing Hellraisers to make mistakes. Because Hellraisers have been playing loads of individual uh, picking spots all over the map, and that's not been working for them, but they've been persisting to uh, keep trying it. So Hellraisers now, with uh, Akutra outside along. And there has been a lot of flanking from Zevers in this area. He's been flanking just generally quite a lot in all the, across all the maps. Now we've got uh, this might be Angel looking to entry mid and catwalk. Now that's yeah, Adren on short. He peaked last time, but he he didn't win the duel, and he had an earlier look, but to no avail. Wall of Smokes would be so good here. There's there's nobody on the site. This is it would be the perfect play to win a round like this. But again, if they don't have the execute, then have to play straight up against the AWPer and this is very risky because you'd expect sentries to hit these shots they're pretty good, easy for any AWPer to actually pull off here we're going to have to play in trying to get the trade onto the AWPer and they will win out that situation Kucha wins the one-on-one -on, -one on long and in winning that one-on-one -on -one now we have a very solid round here for Hellraisers to win but this two-on-two -two, every chance for LGB to get these frags and show us what they're made of Polly and Jaken versus Kucha and Adren for overtime or for the map in the case of Hellraisers. Okay, Orb versus Orb, AK versus M4. And the going to go wide and get a trade. And uh, Jake's running back. Oh, and there's another smoke here. And Kucha has got to find the right angle. And he's too far to the right. And we should have seen the defuse oh! again. He's too far to the right. And we are going to go oh my God. to overtime. James, this happened on Overpass as well. Nobody learns these angles. This is a situation that happens all the time. You should be. You should learn these angles. You should be able to do it through the smoke as a pro player. I wonder if they knew that both players were on long. If they did, then uh, Adrian may not need to come out so wide from the goose area as yep. his teammate will have the peak have first. Have to have the crossfire. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Um, so that's actually the second time. I mean, the first time we saw a situation like that, it was the. Op uh, a plant for um, toilets overpass, yeah. on overpass. Yeah, and uh, I'm not sure if it was Kucha, but it was Hellraisers that they, they didn't know where the plant was, and the Corp was just like wildly shooting in the, in the into the smoke without any idea where the plant exactly was. So just gambling it, basically, instead of knowing, okay, well, the plant is here. I've practiced this, and so we had the reference points. So it's going to cost them uh, potentially a map here, unless they can pull it out in the overtime. But they're starting off on the T side again, where they have been struggling. As, as did LGB, each team of course getting 5 rounds on their team side. Alright, so MR5, 16k, 5 rounds a half as opposed to 15. So you've got a, got a while to go here guys. It's 15, 15, first to 21 rounds will prove victorious unless it goes 20, 20. So we might have the one-on-one -on -one between Kucha and Zevers again on long for long control. This is a really important duel. To, to potentially win if you actually are going to go for it and commit to it later into the round. But Kucha's rotating already away from long, which would suggest that they actually are thinking about B. It's like they're just saying, okay, we're just going to go B, no matter what we see from this point. And if two players continue to play long in car, then that's going to be really good because the rotation will be very long from B, uh, from A to B. But already the push is coming in from Zevis. He's actually pushing A long, I think, already. So they're going to be fast here, although the flank will arrive. Lining up for JKM though, going to spray them both down and now we have really big issues because again, LGB playing two players in the bomb site, and it is going to be an easy 
situation for LGB. They lock this one down. Yeah, Hellraiser's is getting stuck in the choke point there. And uh, it's a dream to do as much as he can, but with 16k, I don't think LGB are going to be too worried just yet. Well, he's finding quite a few frags here. Oh, he's only got 10 seconds, however, and the bomb is in the B tunnel. So as long as these two CTs stay separated, he cannot win this round. And he knows that as well as we do, so he will save his AK for another day. And LGB will proceed with two orps here on the second round of overtime. Okay, so we have one round for LGB now. The B split attempt did not work out for Hellraisers. And uh, let's see now if they have a different approach or if they go for something similar. They have a very, they're just going to rush in here, jumping across. Doji going to be challenging Polly. And I'm not sure if he was trying to open up the shot for the for an offer for, for Mo, but Mo was kind of far away. So he was just jumping around. Just He could have just died there for nothing, He's James. He's playing chicken then. James, he could have just died for nothing there. Yes. That would have been very weird. But um, now it's... The rest of his team moving slowly towards middle. Try to get some entries close to middle. And also, catwalk control will be pretty good here as well. Just to clear it out to make sure there's no fast flank if they do go for the B play, which they are looking to do again. Again, pay attention to the fact that they threw the bomb onto another player, not on the floor. As if there's somebody playing near the car area, then they will hear that bomb and they could change their formation accordingly. Help Mo just a second to slow to take down Polly there. Kucha taking down Rabino, however. So that's the CT area clear for now. And they are, in fact, going to head towards a different area entirely. That said, Jake should have heard that running. And he yep. can see him moving away from the B tunnel as well, going towards the window. And uh, great timing there on the Molotov to slow down Hellraiser. 25 seconds left on the clock for them to push the short play, um, area. And they do have control of long as well. Moving in now, it's going to be... Good situation for them on the positioning, but they need to get the kills. We've got a guy on Goose to change everything, but no, Zevis goes down immediately. Adren is going to be planting not safe for Long. So they need to get the player from Long. He needs to flank on short or get onto the bomb site. He's going to go for the flank here. This could be absolutely crucial. Probably with a cursory check, but he will not spot that. And even if they do get the kill quickly on Dozy, as they do, Angel is coming from behind. And, and he has the Molotov again, James. He has the Molotov. He, he will be spotted. Does get no scope there by Sentries. And that will be it. Sentries does not like his chances for this. There's no time left. He'll back away. So good round there by Hellraisers. You have to give them props. After they got the... Uh, they, they lost the duel in Upper Dark, but got the pick in mid. That they actually fell back and cancelled the B split. Because there are two players in the B bomb site. There's no... It, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. They've tried before to uh, continue to push in a situation like that and it just gets crushed every time. So very good for them to cancel and fall back into another play. All tied up at 16 apiece. And we will have the double peak into mid but we'll have the a flash peak into mid from the CTs it seems and somehow gets away with that. No one tagged. Well, Polly actually got tagged there but nobody tagged on the T side are following that peak with the flash. Two people down long for LGB. I'm sure one of them will rotate uh, just about now, in fact. And once again, Hellraiser start taking control of the short area. However, you have to ask if they choose to push that later on, if they're just going to go for the raw dueling, as we have seen in previous rounds, with mixed success. Leaning towards failure, one might say. In they creep. Polly's ready, gets the shot onto Angel. Very nasty angle to deal with. In fact, an angle that Angel was abusing on his CT side. But this time it's going to be another cancel into mid for Hellraisers. And they kind of have actually bait out Zeves as he was kind of expecting the B play. Wanted to get ahead of it. But this time Kucha will eliminate him. Great shot there from Mo. And it's going to be actually uh, Rubino picking up a kill onto Dozier um, into, into mid as well. So LGB don't know 100% what the hell's going on right now. It's very confusing as players are spotted all over the map here. But it's going to be Mo jumping into the crosshair of Rubino. That will change things ever so slightly as it now becomes a two-on-two. -two. Bomb down, planted for short. When we have a uh, player for LGB moving towards Lon. Okay, so one on site, one on short for the Hellraiser side. 
Polly's walking on A slope, so they won't detect him. Rubino may be the man to run distraction as Polly comes in for support, goes for a jumping walk shot, not going to make it. 34 HP on him, now he's dead. Trade's coming in there, Rubino taking down Kucha, and Adren will secure the next round for his team. Pick up the AWP as well. Which will save them a little bit of money. You can see the money starting to run a bit low on some of the LGB players. In fact, most of them. But they are going to continue on this double lot buy as this is the second last round. Yeah, our races have actually done so much better in, in these T rounds than they had in the uh, regular time. And uh, Sentry's with the cat boost, so he's going to go for the quick flick with the orb, but his timing's a little bit delayed here. He's going to spot one. And I think he himself was spotted as well, so he's going to cast the cancel completely. Oh, good position there from JKM, though unexpected by Angel. He was looking for maybe the uh, stack position. And Rubino and uh, JKM are playing mid doors together here, and there's not much focus on A itself at the moment, so. That is at currently the major weakness, but Harry's just didn't get that info because Angel didn't see the second player there. So they're just slowing things down a little bit. They have a minute to play with, slowly taking over Catwalk. In goes the flash and the peak for a teammate. Now uh, will Adrian get the kill? He's going to spot the player jumping down, wants to capitalize, picks up one kill on Rubino, who is also on the crossover angle. Now Dozier moves in for the wrap, takes down sentries as Hellraiser's also take down control of this one. It's going to be difficult now for uh, for LGB to bring this one back, but it is a three on three and the bomb is down. Time is starting to be of the essence, but the bomb is on a path, a clear path towards that A site. Okay, again, a one round lead here, and those are going to be struggling to get the pick with only nine HP, but he'll manage to do it. Looking to get the second one as well. A little bit of tapping on Polly, but he runs out of bullets. Well, he must know he's tagged as he's hunting for a frag here. The longer he takes, the more T's he may have to end up dealing with. And he will lose to Adren, who comes in to save Dozier's bacon. And Hellraiser's take a two-round lead as we move into the last round of the first half. It's actually looking so much better for Hellraiser's in this uh, overtime, which is kind of interesting. Triple up here to spine up all the goodies to uh, challenge those doors with. Now, are they going to get anything here? This is going to be pretty dangerous for... LGB to cross, and they will pick up the frag, and they already have players running in. They get two kills, as we had the timing pick as well, onto uh, A Long, and it's just one man. It's Polly. He's got the impossible job of holding off a couple of T's, it would seem. And he is going to go down. Straight headshot from Dozier. Howries is looking pretty strong in a take. Bomb is not there yet, though, and the rotation is coming in. So it's just a bit of a shooting gallery here, as Howries is cleaning up the rest of the players. Five versus two, both very low. And LGB are going to go down uh, and only win one round on their CT side. That is pretty nasty, James. Yeah, Hellraiser is two rounds away from victory here in the third map of this best of five. Looking to take a 2-1 lead. LGB again, three round deficit now. So Hellraiser is in a good spot. You know, MR5, 16k, they can afford a bit of failure here. But um, again, only require two of these five rounds. Otherwise, maybe we go into overtime. LGB need all of these five rounds to take it. Otherwise, they will either lose when we continue with more Counter-Strike. So Timing pick, not quick enough. From Polly, that is, on long. Okay, so you can see Mo with an advanced position on short. There's no one covering his back here. Bit of pre-fire going in from the tees, but Sentries will be the uh, first victim here in the sixth round of overtime. And that's really abusable as well because it's... It's pretty rare that uh, T's just run up to catwalk until like around 1.15. That's usually around the average of the earliest that you'd see people around catwalk in a match like this where you're expecting orpers to be... If, if there's no smoke down in mid, that is. So nice nade. Gonna hurt a bunch of players. Could you gonna follow up with a frag into the face of Jake. And if you look at LGB, the bomb is still in T spawn. They've only got one somebody going into tunnels now. They don't have any significant map position. Um, Mo with a an aggressive angle on short as well. So information can come early for Hellraisers wherever LGB choose to push. There are still two people with a crossfire set up on B as well. One can essentially spot um, from the plat. The other is on car. So I think this is that Dren jumping up, and uh, he's going to get the slam dunk. Is Polly the Shadow going to give Zevez his position away before he can come out? Two more bombs down as well. Rubino versus four to stop Hellraiser's going to gain points here. 
he will be unable to do it. 20 rounds in favor of Hellraisers, and again, the first of 21 will take the map. Yeah, it's looking really bad for LGB now, and uh, I think this series can gets harder and harder for them because it's it's Mirage and Inferno as well um, coming up, and uh, two good maps for Hellraisers. Either way, we've got the uh, <laughs> the auto shotgun. Sorry, auto shotgun. Sorry, auto sniper there on uh, JK. Sorry, no, it's the Krieg, isn't it? He's I think dead. it was an auto sniper. It was an auto sniper. He's dead, James. Doesn't matter. He is dead. He is gone. He's left the building. He's deceased. He is in the ground. He is uh, a mere figment of our imagination. He is a history. He is a memory. He is a photograph. He's pushing up flowers. And we have Dozier going down on the peak. Very aggressive timing there because that's like 115, 120. Dozier's already peaking into T spawn. It's very, very early timing um, to do that. And we're going to have Hellraiser's moving in to try to rotate to uh, try to. Fill out the, the hole, the gap that was left in the defense. Mo does take down the trade, but he's alone now on the uh, bomb site. He needs support immediately. Probably going to go in for the kill. Mo has some uh, angles to look at as Catwalk's being assaulted. Angel holds it off for the time being, allowing Mo to focus on this player that's on long. Oh, pulls out the banana. Can he get the frag though? No. Zeves from the bomb site does make it happen, but a nice dink there from Adren. We'll put him down to 10 HP. Adren, is he going to go all the way to long here? It looks like he is going to do that. They should be able to read this though. It's going to be quite a while until he gets there. But in doing this, he's forcing them to look one at short and one at long. He isn't giving him one on ones. That's why it's so smart here. And Polly will take the frag down on 4 HP. So very close round. Very, very close round. So many match points here for Hellraisers. LGB have a lot of work to do. LGB have to win every round just to tie things up. Otherwise, they might be in for something insurmountable. We'll have to wait and see. Flash gonna come out, but Polly obviously knows to look away, but now he's at the disadvantage where he has to go for the repeat and Angel will punish him for it. Almost a second frag there for Angel. Just slightly tagged. Gonna leg Zevez on a second shot through the smoke as well. Looks like the push is coming in, and this time the fast play from Kucha may well just pay off. He could get a bunch for his money here. That's gonna be three, including one from Adrenaline with the Flames. It's Jake versus five to keep his team in game three here. There's one frag for him. Needs to find many, many more. But that's the only one he's going to find. 21 to 17. Hellraisers take map three of this best of five. Uh, they barely, barely, barely do it there. Really close. LGB very scary on that, uh, on that CT half there. And uh, it's, it seemed weird because we got into the overtime. And Hellraisers all of a sudden were like, hey, we know how to take T rounds. We're just joking, guys. We can take T rounds. We've got four T rounds. It's a pretty big deal considering that they in, in regular time they could only take five. So, uh, well, uh, any any additional thoughts there before we jump into cash? Uh, it's no mirage. It was a long it's slog, mirage. but uh, we're going to see many more orbs in the next map as well. Yeah, we will. All right, guys. Well, we will set that up for you. We'll be back after the break for map number four. Hellraisers just need one more to win, and of course, one more to stay in it for LGB to push it to uh, a fifth, which would be Inferno. But we will join you. Well, you will join us for Mirage. Uh, very shortly.